Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Skaggly Bones back with another video for you today. Well, it's been a while. It has been a few months, in fact. But, sorry about things. Uh, things have been a little hectic. I've had to move. Uh, being in the military, you move quite a bit. Well, I just recently did a PCS from uh, Virginia, where I was at, to Guam. So, now here in Guam, and just really not had all my stuff, not been able to make the videos like I've been able to. Don't have any of my modeling stuff, don't have any of my computer stuff. Uh, kind of been working with that little laptop there. So only games I've really been playing has been Diablo 3. And it's been a little dodgy out here in Guam. If you don't know where Guam is, it is out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. In the middle of nowhere. A great, gorgeous place. But man, internet, <laughs> internet's terrible out here. But, <laughs> I digress, and I think we're going to be taking the channel in a slightly different direction here, as I've been putting more time into my cycling than I really have into my gaming and my modeling. Uh, we'll still bring you reviews on things like that and updates as far as the gaming and modeling is concerned, but I did want bring you, as I promised you at the beginning of the channel, that we wanted to uh, focus a lot on and different reviews of tech and stuff. So, uh, since I do a lot of cycling, a lot of road cycling, uh, for my fitness, not just for my fitness, but um, or for a hobby for that matter, but it's, it's a little bit of everything. So, being in the military, uh, gotta keep my fitness levels up. And since having knee surgery uh, back in 2010, I am not allowed to run anymore, so this is what I have to do. I have to ride a bicycle. And as you can see here, this is a Jameis Ventura road bike. I've had this now for a little bit of time, and so I plan to do a long-term review. But first of all, this video, we're going to focus on bicycling, bicycling gear. The overview and basics of what I use for my cycling and um, kind of the setup that I have here. Um, as you can see, this is, like I said, this is Jameis Ventura competition. This is kind of a long term review of the Jameis Ventura line of cycles. This is their aluminum road bike line. And Jameis has two aluminum road bike lines. They have both the Ventura, and of course, uh, and more recently, years in the last three or four years, they've uh, created the Icon line, which is more along their race geometry lines. This is a slightly bit uh, more of a endurance line, as you can see from that gap in the the rear wheel between the uh, the rear wheel and the seat, or uh, the uh, I should say the uh, down seat down tube. There, as you can see, you got about oh about a half inch gap there. Typically, you'd have about maybe even a less than a quarter inch gap if uh, if uh, it is a race bike. But fortunately, Jameis, as you can see from the from the front head tube angle, uh, it is uh, quite more aggressive than a standard uh, endurance bike. So. You still have a pretty decent uh, short uh, wheelbase um, compared to a lot of other endurance bikes. Yet you do have a little bit more of that less aggressiveness in the back to give you a little bit more comfort. So this is my setup that I have. As you can see, like I said, um, aluminum road bike. It is quite a larger frame. As you can see right there, 61 centimeters. I'm a decent sized fellow. Now. I could ride probably as small as a uh, 58 centimeter road bike if I was uh, doing more racing type of things, but um, I do ride quite a bit. I, I try to put around 30 to 40 miles a day. Uh, on non-work days, I'll do about 30 miles a day because I do ride to work and back. Uh, during um, weekends, I'll do at least 50 to 60 miles, sometimes more than that. Sometimes I'll do 100 mile rides. It just depends how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling a little squirrely or not. This does have uh, the um, iconic uh, Jameis Zenith carbon fiber fork. 
So you can see it is a very straight racing fork. Um, and they use that in pretty much all their line. Uh, they've uh, gone to this carbon fiber fork and it has uh, worked uh, quite great. As you can see it is a little thicker fork so it, it is, is a heavier fork. Um, in this bike, uh, in fact you can see a couple scratches here. Let me see if I can zoom in uh, to show you kind of the quality of this fork. Uh, there's a couple scratches there and that is actually from an accident I had. I so um, these are not the original Let's see here. These are not the original quick release skewers, as you can see. These are a, um, a heavy duty aluminum quick release skewer that I replaced um, the originals. Uh, the originals uh, kind of got beat up so badly that I was having a hard time uh, getting grip on on the uh, front wheels and the, and the rear wheel for that matter. So I ended up uh, just going in uh, for about $25, $30, I think it was. Um, here in Guam, I actually replaced the uh, front and quick wheel skewers. Now, something about in Guam, it is a lot more slick. The roads are partially made of coral reef out here, and so when it gets wet, it gets extremely slick. So I'm, I've been using the uh, Continental Gator skins, I've been using them for quite some time. Um, <clears throat> anyone who knows Continental knows that they have wear marks. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see here. Ah, uh, there we go. I'm gonna try to zoom in here on these wear marks. Uh, yep. Okay, so you see them little dimples in there? Those are the wear marks on Continentals. And all Continental tires have those. Um, and what they are is they're, they're actually holes in the tire. And then when that gets down to nothing, when those two holes get down to where they're flush, or pretty close to flush, it's time to change out your tires. And right now I have about, oh uh, gosh, I would have to actually look, but I got close to 6,000 miles on these current tires. I replaced these tires, I have about 8,000 miles on this bike. I replaced the tires, the original tires were, um, oh gosh, I don't even remember, Vittoria, uh, they were their low end $30 tires. And I replaced them after about 2,000 tires, 2,000 miles, excuse me, because the rear end, I just wore it down to almost nothing. I was not rotating the tires. I didn't know anything about rot rotating tires. I didn't even think about it. And um, I kind of blew it out. I rear tire out. So I just, uh, I went to a set of Continentals. They offer great puncture uh, protection. I also run a set of tire liners. Um, I was not going to run tire liners. Uh, with these tires because they, they offer such great pun uh, puncture protection. Uh, your Continental Gator skins and most of your Continentals for that matter, your higher lined, um, they uh, have Kevlar lined and I will do a review on these um, in another video but just to kind of give you an overview. Um, I would not run tire liners but the roads in Guam have so much debris on them uh, even, even on the roads themselves that I run an extra set um, well, in each each tire, I have a what's called a tire liner, and it's a it's a piece of rubber, a thin rubber, and it stops punctures as well. And I don't really need them with the Continental Gator skins, but um, I do use that. Now I'm thinking about going to an All Seasons because an All Seasons is slightly softer in certain spots to allow for a little bit more traction. And here in Guam, traction actually gets pretty bad. So I've had a couple of slips just because of weather conditions and when it comes to raining in these I ride pretty slow uh, compared to my normal speeds. I only go 15 miles, 15 or 16 miles an hour uh, compared to about 21 to 25 miles an hour that I ride on a, uh, a regular basis uh, being in good weather conditions. So that is the tires that I'm using. Obviously they are 25 millimeter. The, the originals were uh, only 23 millimeters so I've upgraded there which, which for my weight uh, size and weight uh, being the fact that I'm six foot two and I weigh uh, almost 230 pounds. I, I, <laughs> I like to have a, just a little bit, I have to have a lot higher tire pressure and so I don't like to have too high of tire pressure because it uh, allows for a lot, a lot better wear um, and a lot less rolling resistance. Okay, I'm still running the same uh, Mavic wheels that came uh, CXP 22s, uh, they are very good wheels. Um, These what came with the bike. Uh, they are 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, as you can see there, they're formula hubs. Uh, not too bad uh, for, for beginning, um, I should say, for starting out hubs. Uh, you can do a lot worse. Um, they're, they're pretty sturdy, uh, pretty good hubs. They are single um, loose bearing hubs, so they do make it very easy to service, very easy to change out the grease in them and keep them running. So I've already serviced the hubs, oh, uh, what's it been now? About three times I've, I've gone, gone through and re-greased them. So um, I do all, pretty much all the service myself. Um, as you can see, there are a few differences with this bike over a, as it would come standard, First of all, the pedals, um, uh, you're just going to get standard pedals when you get this bike um, if you're to buy uh, uh, Jameis uh, Ventura, uh, any Ventura line of bikes, you're going to get uh, just uh, standard pedals. So I put on, as you can see there, that is a set of speed play zeros, uh, chromoly. Uh, so I didn't go anything that's super fancy. The chromolys are already, um, oh gosh, you got to almost $150 in those, those pedals. But I really like the speed play. I like the double entry, as you can see here. And they, <laughs> they almost look like mountain bike pedals, but it keeps it very simple for me. Um, the only other thing you have to do is you have to kind of grease these, not on a regular basis, but you can't really change out the bearings or take the bearings apart. You have to grease them. And I'll give, uh, like I said, I've been using these for quite a long time. Uh, gosh, it's been almost, oh, 8,000 miles now that I got on these pedals, so I will be doing a long-term review on those. This crank, as you can see here, if you look on the, the uh, Jameis website, this is not the crank that comes with the bike. It would come with either a square taper bottom bracket or a <clears throat> what they call a power spline bottom bracket. So this has an external bottom bracket, so what I did is almost immediately when I bought the bike, I wanted an external bottom bracket. So I went out and the group set that is on this is Shimano Sora, as you can see there. Spin this around here as so you can see it. Okay, there it is, it's Shimano Sora group set, which is the second line group set. It's their nine speed group set, nothing super fancy. Um, but uh, Sora, um, as you can see, has gotten a lot of triple down um, technology from the 105 group sets. Of, uh, of literally almost last year. Uh, 105 now has the Altegra um, styling of the five, or sorry, of the four connection uh, for the chain ring. So they now use four connections and they're almost styled exactly like the Altegra and Dura Ace crank sets. So what they've done now is they've taken the Sora and the Tiegra models. Well, the Tiegra actually is now, as of this year, uh, 2016 is now designed after the 105 group set. The only difference is it's 10 speed. So now your Sora is now um, just like a 105 group set. So I'm, I'm almost expecting that in the near future they're going to have a Sora that's also a 10 speed model uh, as well as a 9 speed. And of course still your Claris is your, your bottom of the line. But um, the nice thing is the Sora now is completely a through. Uh, external bottom bracket with a Holotech 2 crank. So that's really what I wanted. I wanted the external bottom bracket. It's a lot easier to clean and service. Um, in fact, uh, I can take apart my bottom bracket in about two minutes and have it serviced and cleaned and back together. And uh, there's, <clears throat> it's a lot easier to grease and a lot easier to keep service, especially since I'm in Guam and it's very wet conditions out here. So, so that is that was not standard. That cost me about oh seventy dollars altogether, including the bottom bracket. So it was about fifty, uh, fifty bucks, or fifty nine dollars, and then about um, another fifteen dollars for the bottom bracket itself, the bottom bracket bearings cup. Uh, some other things, uh, still the the standard brakes. They are Tecto brakes, but when you first get the brakes, and I'll kind of show you here, the um, the brakes that you do get. Uh, I'm trying to focus in here. Let's see here. As you can see here, these are replaceable brakes. They got a replaceable pin right here. And I can replace the brake pads without replacing the entire uh, the entire bolt and everything bolt assembly. So I don't have to readjust them every single time I 
change out my brake pads. Uh, the only thing I would have to change uh, to adjust would be uh, this piece here. So as I get farther down, <clears throat> I adjust the brakes so they tighten up. Um, and the only thing I'd have to do is re-loosen it and adjust it back down to the original setting for new brake pads. That makes it kind of nice. The original brake pads <clears throat> were Tektro. It was all one solid piece. In order to replace them, you had to just replace the whole brake pad. They were getting a little worn for my taste. They had some metal shavings in them. So I just pulled them out and replaced them. I think those, these are surface brakes. And I will show you on the front, the compound. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. Once again, I will do uh, probably a, a long-term review on these brakes. Um, as you can see, they are Surface brakes, company Surface, and they have multiple, they have three different compound surfaces. So they wear a lot better and they stop a lot better in the wet conditions out here. The only problem is when I'm done, the rear brake is absolutely disgustingly filthy if it's been raining out here. They collect so much grime. Uh, but they they do stop very well. So my whole braking surface along the, the aluminum braking surface here, as you can see, on the rims, and then um, the brake pads themselves will be just absolutely black and filthy. So that's the only drawback to them, but they are great, great brake pads. Work really awesome. Tecto brakes, um, uh, just kind of standard, basic uh, starting out brakes. Um, so something um, I plan to possibly change out in the next year or so. Well, unfortunately, they're not too expensive. Other thing, as you can see here, obviously this is not going to be the standard bar tape that you get, uh, but I do change out my bar tape quite regularly. I think changing out uh, certain cosmetic things like your bar tape when it gets super dirty, it just helps your, your ride enjoyment a little bit better. Now, I don't always recommend white bar tape. It's just the fact that when I did my first change out of bar tape, this is my, uh, I believe, my fifth or sixth change out of bar tape. My first change out was to a black and a red. The first tape I had was cork tape. I got quite a long life out of that until I actually um, had some tears in it. Uh, what I'm using right now is um, what we call lizard skin uh, bar tape. Um, quite good. The lizard skin bar tape is more of a rubbery feel and a tacky feel. As you can see there, there is the uh, lizard skin logo on the inner um, uh, tape, wrap tape, <coughs> or finishing tape, I should say. And uh, lizard skin is one of the few companies. It costs a little bit more. You can get uh, uh, cheaper uh, cork tape, but it tends to tear quite a bit. So I go through a lot less lizard skin tape than I do the others. So the first color that I used, um, the first change of tape, um, I went and I got, um, I had, it was, it was red and then halfway through it went to black. So uh, the black down here and the red up here and it was kind of a nice contrast with what the bike since the bike is uh, basically a gray bike with black, red, and white accents to it. Okay, so I tried to keep everything color coordinated. So I went to this black and red tape and it worked really good. I used it for quite a while and um, I really could have probably kept it. I probably didn't really need to change it out. But what happened was I had to do some brake work. Um, some, I shouldn't say some, yeah, well, yes, it was, it was brake line work. And I also needed to change. What ended up happening is at one point, um, I needed to change out my shifting cables. Uh, they had um, bound up on me. Um, they had started to come unwind, wound in the back. And then, of course, the brake housings, or sorry, um, the, the gear housings that were original uh, with the bike were just, they weren't super high end. So I went with a little bit higher end um, uh, cable housings and um, a stainless steel, steel cable. The problem was because I washed my bike all the time, uh, the, the non-stainless steel, what was happening to them is they were actually uh, the... The lime deposits in Virginia was getting on the cables and causing them to bind up. So, and it was doing the same thing with the brake cables. So, I switched over to a high-end stainless steel. Paid a, uh, paid a little bit more for them. Instead of about two to three dollars a cable, I spent more like ten dollars a cable, which is makes it a lot worth more worth it. Um, so, all together, and then I got um, as you can see SLR 
uh, brake housings there, so uh, a little bit better Shimano uh, brake housing. So when I did that change out, and I was actually in California at the time when I did the brake, uh, these I, I did right before I um, shipped out from Virginia. And of course, uh, the brake housings um, I did in California when I was in California for a couple weeks. And then at that point, I changed over to uh, my white bar tape that I had. Because I always keep an extra pack of white bar tape. So I switched over. That was my third change out. And um, uh, bar tape. And then more recently, and what I do is when I, uh, with my aero bars. Now, I hadn't been using my aero bars at the time. I put on my aero bars. And um, I was using the aero bars. And they're fine. But they just weren't comfortable because... You're on metal. They're very thin aero bars. These are profile design. Obviously, these aren't going to be standard on a, on a road bike when you buy a road bike. So, I was like, well, I'm going to wrap the aero bars and just make it a little bit more comfortable. So, I did that, and what I did is I was like, well, I'm kind of due for, for a swap. These uh, The white bar tape is getting a little brown. So, what I'll do is I'll take the old stuff, slap it on the aero bars, since I'm not too concerned about the aero bars. And I could wrap them backwards and kind of cover up a little bit of the... As you can see, there's a little bit of brown spots, and that's because uh, the very white stuff is what was covered up from before. So I just kind of reversed them. And then I put um, some new bar tape on. And for some reason, I just out here, I can't find the black, the two-tone. And the two-tone's a little bit more expensive. It's in the $40 range. The single tone is uh, about $35 for the lizard skin. If you want to go with the thicker stuff, they do have this gray stuff, but it's a lot thicker, a little bit more padded, um, which I've thought about trying out, and it's it's the same price as the two-tone. So you pay a little bit more for the lizard skin, but the nice thing is with the lizard skin, you can take you can take a not only a damp cloth, but you could almost take a, a cloth with some Clorox bleach on it and and clean off a big chunk of the stuff. Now the only the only place where I really get dirty, as you can see here, is from my gloves. This is right where I hold the hoods. So I get a lot of dirt here. Um, I shouldn't say dirt. It's just kind of rub off from the gloves. Um, as you can see, uh, when I hold here in this position, my gloves are going to hit right at that point. Or if I'm holding here, it's not so bad. I'm on the rubber completely. But you're just going to get some darkening right here on these. But I suggest for most people, uh, if you really don't want the white, you want to keep your bar, your handlebar uh, tape clean. You're not going to change them out quite that often. Uh, go with the two-tone red and black. It's very great. There, there's a number of different two-tones. You can actually look on Lizard Skin website and uh, and kind of uh, see what they got. Um, but they also post videos on how to change out your bar tape and, and how to wrap the stuff. And, and uh, I'll uh, next next change out. I think I'll just do a, a video on how to to do bar tape, especially for the Lizard Skin. It's quite easy, but um, uh, uh, not too bad. Um, so I enjoy that, and I'll, I'll do a, probably when I do a change, I'll also do a, a long-term review on that type of uh, bar tape. Uh, a couple of bottle cages, very simple, just some two Bond Traeger, nothing super fancy, no carbon fiber or anything like that. Now, at one point I had a carbon fiber seat post. Um, the problem was because it was slightly shorter seat post, I had I was using the carbon fiber paste uh, because it was aluminum frame. Uh, the problem is it doesn't really tell you where to torque it to, and I had a uh, uh, I do have a small torque wrench for the five newton meters on the you know the bar stem, and so I was using that, but way before I was even getting close to torquing it, um, and about. About a month ago, um, I kind of heard a slight little bit of a crack. And uh, to show you what happened. So first of all, kind of lay it out here. There's the original seat post. This is a Richie seat post. This is the original seat post that comes with it. Not bad seat post. The only problem is it's got two bolts, which makes it... And then the, the two-bolt system where you have a front and a back bolt um, is fine. Or if you have a single side bolt here, that makes it very easy to adjust. But the, 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 side, the two side bolts make them very difficult to adjust. So I changed the seat post out, and I got 
an alien carbon by USE. Uh, the only problem is it's, as you can see here, it's quite a bit shorter. But it's okay. Because right there is the minimal line. And as you can see there by a wear line, I was actually to that portion. That's where my seat was actually sitting at. My seat post was sitting at. As you can see, it is one bolt design. It uses a pressure bolt. And then this piece slides. So this was a very good design, but the problem was, as you can see right there, right where my seat post line was, there's a stress crack. So I don't know if it's because of my weight that it did that, or just I barely slightly tightened it down too much. So riders and cyclists beware, carbon fiber can crack pretty easily. Now, um, that's the thickness of the carbon fiber. That's pretty thick. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the interesting thing is I cranked down more. And you say, well, why didn't it? If this, you had cranked it down to a little bit under 5 newton meters, why doesn't your carbon fiber stem or fork, why doesn't your stem, when you crank it down to 5 newton meters, crack the fork? Well, if you were to actually look at the fork and the carbon fiber on that, it's about three times thicker than that carbon fiber right there. So imagine, <laughs> imagine quite a bit thicker than that. So, so that's why it doesn't crack that it's this it's made to take it a little bit more on the, the, the fork but the seat post is intended to be a lot more compliant and a lot more vibrant um, vibration reduction so believe it or not I believe I probably rode probably about 3,000 miles on that crack without any damage the problem was I don't know if you can fully see it you have this this up and down crack which I wasn't too worried about, but it's starting to go sideways. So what would happen is, is this is flexing back and forth like this. It's kind of doing one of these things because that's how it's made to flex. Eventually the crack is going to start to go all the way around and this would just snap off. And it probably wouldn't happen for a long time. I could probably get a lot more use out of it, but cracked carbon fiber, not a good thing. Uh, could I take this back and uh, replace it? Yeah, probably. I'm not sure what kind of warranty I have on this. I don't, I don't even know if I have the paperwork and everything anymore. But uh, that's kind of a dunzer. So what I did is I went to my local bike shop and for $15 I got this. Uh, it was either a Cannondale <laughs> or this Uno if I wanted a single bolt. Now they did have a dual bolt ones that had a bolt here and a bolt here. And that wasn't that bad. But I still wanted a single bolt style so I went with this guy it's got one single bolt and then what it does have that uh, the original did not have is on these these locking pieces there's teeth but there's not teeth on the actual seat post itself where it adjusts so this could slide a lot easier whereas this if it's not tight enough here this is never going to slide back and forth that your adjustment won't slide because it has interlocking teeth on it which does make it a little bit less adjustable. It means that you can lose a few degrees here and there. It means you're either here or here on your adjustment. Sorry about that. You're either here or here on your adjustment for your, for your, uh, your saddle. But that's what you kind of got to live with if you want a little bit better adjustment on your saddle. Okay. As you can see here, we have an ISM saddle. This is not the standard saddle. saddle. It was a San Marco. Uh, before and the problem was it just a little bit oh not that sturdy for me and um, once I went to the ISM Adamo saddle um, I've have no absolutely no soft tissue pressure points anymore because you're completely sitting on all your sit bones once again this was almost an immediate I think only rode for a thousand miles before I changed the saddle out so I got about seven thousand miles on the saddle so I'll do a long-term review as well. The other thing that you can see, well, besides the, the cycling computers that I got there, and I don't have any Garmin stuff, just two Cat Eyes, uh, Cat Eyes Smart, Strata Smart uh, for cadence and for speed. 
I'm sorry, for cadence time and some distance stuff. And then I have a, a, a basic cat eye micro wireless, which I use for speed and distance. So, um, but I got to have cadence. And if I could use this one, but it only shows two things at a time. Um, the only way I could get three things is if I had cadence, speed, and power. So I could have speed and power, cadence and power by side by side, but I can't have distance on there with speed and distance with power and just so I'm only I'm stuck with only limited to two things on here. And I got about four or five things I look at at any given time because I like to have my time on. I have I like to have my time, what time of the day it is. I don't normally use a timer or chronograph, I'm not worried about that stuff, but I always want to have cadence and I always want to have speed and I always want to have distance and I always want to have what time of the day it is. Okay, so that's what I have. And this has um, speed and distance, and I always have cadence on here, and I always have time of the day at the bottom. So, so like I said, that's why I have the two cycling computers. Um, and I could, I could uh, probably eliminate both of these if I just went with a Garmin, but uh, hard to get Garmin's here in Guam, and probably should have bought one before I left the states, but. That's my mistake. No big deal. These two do serve its purpose. Now, in about a week, I'm going to be receiving a couple new mounts for these. They're not the standard cat eye mounts. They're aluminum. They're special mounts. And uh, it's going to change the position here of how these are mounted. And I'll be showing you guys that when that happens. And probably the last thing that I have here is this is my, my bag that I use, my saddlebag. As you can see, it is not the largest saddlebag. It looks looks pretty big, but it's also not the smallest saddlebag. They make very tiny saddlebags that don't strap here, that only are on their seat. Um, but uh, of course, I'm going to do a separate video on what I carry on my bike. Since uh, since this uh, video is kind of going a little long here, uh, we will talk about what I keep in the saddlebag. And once again, all this equipment you see on the bike, I've been riding pretty much since the beginning short of cables bar tape and a few small items um, and then i will talk about what i keep in my saddlebag everything that i ride with on a daily basis the other thing i have here is a lensite lenzine bike pump and the reason i use this specific pump and i will go over this as well in another video is the fact that this has a gauge on it it is aluminum, it's a nice sturdy pump, it has a screw in here and a purge valve and uh, it, it allows me to tell what pressure exactly um, my tires are at and that's very important for me. I will not use canisters because I do, <laughs> I will go out and almost never, well I should say this, I've gone through more tires than I've gone through inner tubes. I have not gone through. I've only, I only had, when I had the rupture on the back tire the first time with my first set of tires, um, the inner tube popped. And it put a tiny hole in it and I've repaired it and I'm still running that same inner tube. So I've yet to go through a set of inner tubes with these tires. So I kind of, I probably shouldn't even keep inner tubes in here. I should probably just keep a bunch of patches. Uh, but no, I always keep two inner tubes and the fact is most of the time I'm adjusting my tire pressure on the fly not really fully pumping them up so almost never do I have to fully pump up my tires so I'm going to do a review on that I have two, I have two small frame pumps um, uh, I don't have a floor pump with me all that's in my regular um, household goods that is uh, still getting here uh, because I am on only, in only temporary lodgings right at this point in time and so once I move into my new house uh, that I'm purchasing, uh, hopefully you guys will get to see a, uh, some videos from the workshop. So that's it for today, folks. This is Skagla Bones signing out uh, with the first cycling video. So hopefully you guys like that. Um, if you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more cycling videos. Uh, they probably won't be as regular as my other videos had been uh, since I am in what would be called a deployment status. I am on a, I am attached to a vessel, a seagoing vessel. But 
hopefully folks um, I can get out some good cycling videos for you and some great reviews you folks have a wonderful day this is Skagglebones signing out